Welcome to another lovely SMI community meeting. Um, I take it Phil is gonna subscribe. Is that right? Yeah, that's cool. good. Um, awesome. So let's have a look at the agenda for tonight. Right? Yeah, that's today. Um, so I had an, ish, an, an um, agenda item there. Um, around a question that a colleague of mine raised. I just have a look if he's around. Otherwise, we might, yeah, we might postpone. Background here is, the question was um, if there is a, a similar, if there, if there are any plans really to have something similar to what um, the conformance suite that, that uh, Lee is working on. Um, and um, yeah, I, I'll just throw it out there. I, I don't expect anyone to actually answer it unless you, you know of something. Um, it was probably more out of interest if, in the same way that you know the, the control plane um, conformance could be uh, tested uh, more or less in, on the, probably on the Envoy level, I, I guess. Um, but given that my colleague is not here, I'm not, not entirely positive if it makes sense. But if, if someone knows something, then uh, please please feel free to, free to share. I don't know if anything. Um, that's an interesting uh, question. I would be uh, curious to know like what, um, what conformance would, what, what the goal of conformance uh, for the data plane would be. Right. Right. And, and, and also, I mean, it kind of assumes, I guess, that we already have a standard, which one way to a certain extent might be uh, considered, uh, because if, if, you know, if the data play is not, if there's not a, a standard, then it's kind of like hard to, to buy the conformance for it. But um, yeah, I would definitely um, suggest that we revisit that once, once I've confirmed that my colleague is around and explains the motivation better. Yeah. I'm not sure I understand the question. When, when it says conformance to the data plane, would be the goal to have uh, two meshes with two data plane that can interoperate at at runtime? I, I can give you one. Given that I didn't raise, like um, I'm more like no pun intended, a proxy for that question. Um, a colleague of mine asked me that, and I said, I don't know. I don't know of anything, but you know, I, I happily asked the, the big brains in, in the SMI call. Um, I, I can uh, think of one thing. So if you, again, this is not saying Envoy is the standard, but mm -hmm. it's de facto very widely used. So if you think of implementing, uh, actually we raised a, a, a relevant uh, issue on, on the UDPA uh, working group uh, as well. If you think of the Envoy API implemented in say um, eBBF or BBF, right? So it has the same API, but it's not the Envoy proxy, right? And mm -hmm. You want to make sure that some workload that works against the Envoy proxy now works on that new BBF-based implementation. How do you make sure that this, and you know, you could implement the Envoy proxy in a bunch of bash scripts, right? I mean, we all like bash scripts. Like what, why not, right? You, you could. And the question is then if you have workloads that or in hardware, right? You might have a dedicated chip that implements that. Why not? So if you have that kind of challenge, right? So you, you come from the original, the OGU real Envoy to some other implementation that is, uh, or, or, or uh, claims to be uh, UDPA or Envoy APIs compatible, how can you actually prove that or, or test that, it, that you actually are? I guess that's the without really knowing the, the details, that's probably one, one of the main drivers behind that question. That makes sense. So can we get the cool. person who had the, the question that was relaying it to you to yes. um, put I, in an I'll issue? Definitely, I, I, yes, I, I'll follow up with him and, and ask him. So we can get all the details. And exactly, yeah, exactly. Do it accurately, cool. thank you. Thanks a lot. I don't know like exactly how to do that. I'm totally out of my depth here, but uh, one place that might be easier to start than others is like maybe in metrics, like the kinds of metrics you could get out of a particular proxy. That might be an easier place to start. 
So I don't know how to do the other things yep. or how to do conformance around the other things. Oh, I'll take an action item to follow up with them around uh, an, an issue if that makes sense. Bridget, PR reviews. Awesome, yeah. Of you needed there. I, I dropped some specific links in of a few that I think could probably use an eye or two. So in some of them, we had like one review, but we need two. This is related to, um, Michelle was pointing out that we, some of them we might want to make sure that we get a couple of reviews on. Um, I put this on the agenda, but it was uh, inspired by that inside of Michelle's. Michelle, do you have more you want to say about that? Oh, yeah. I just um, feel like, you know, more people are getting involved in this spec and uh, I don't want to like lose out on momentum, but I think even Stefan had pointed out it's just taking a while to like get reviews and stuff and totally get it. Like, I don't think anybody is working on a spec full time, uh, but just I don't know if we need more maintainers or. Yeah, I, I was just about to ask exactly that. Can we maybe given that the, that there are apparently only very few people who can GTM or whatever approve. Uh, can we yeah. really expand? Like, is that a, an option to expand the number of potential? I don't see why not. Yeah, uh, I think we need to like maybe engage with people and see, you know, who's interested, and like then there's usually like a vote and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's let's kick that off, right? I mean, yeah. sending something out to the list saying like, hey, uh, we, I mean, we could also have something in between, right? It doesn't have to be a full maintainer or whatever that there, there might be a dedicated review role, but kicking off the discussion itself like hey we need to scale right we need more people yeah uh, who would be interested in something like that if it's full maintainer or review role or whatever like I, I i certainly know i would definitely do that right i have cycles uh specifically for smi uh, allocated so I, I would happily do that but again it's not about full maintainer or not we, we want more eyes that can essentially authoritatively say, yep, uh, LGTM. Right. Yeah, that would be great. Um, let me kick off that conversation. I mean, you'd be great. Um, so let me go ahead and kick off that uh, conversation on the thread and or on the mailing list and um, let's let's figure it out. I 100% agree. Awesome. Any other thoughts? Cool. There is also a little annoyance on the how the pull requests work. So let's say you make pull request like I did. Yeah. Then there is a typo or I I forgot to put minus width to some doc, right? And I got the reviews for it to be merged. If I let's say fix that typo or I add a minus somewhere, all the um, reviews are lost, it resets to zero, then you have to wait like another two weeks, three weeks to find mm -hmm. uh, all those persons again. So yeah, it would be great to have more uh, more eyes on this that can react but, faster. I that, that's the reason I didn't uh, modify that typo because I'm planning to merge the pull request now and ask you <laughs> to fix it in your pull request because you have to okay. rebase. So even your pull request will will lose the the reviews. Yeah. No, I totally get that. I think for me, it's on every project because force pushing dismisses all the reviews. And then I'm like, please give me a review again. I promise I didn't change anything except for the typo. <laughs> <laughs> I just annoy people. I'm like, can you please, please merge this? So, yeah. Great. Well, so, um, is there any? Sorry. Oh, I was going to say that sounds pretty good. And since we are all paying attention to SMI at this very moment, I challenge everyone to pick at least one of those links I put in there and go put a review if you are a maintainer. Yeah. Or oh, if wait, you're not wait. a maintainer, but definitely wait. if you're a maintainer. Let me merge it first. Then <laughs> we rebase the other two. Then we ask yep. people. <laughs> and I did put that one uh, you know, note that Stefan has the needed approvals on that one. So perhaps he's just gonna click and merge and then we'll deal with some of those unaddressed comments. Is there okay. any of those one, two, three, four, is there some low hanging fruit? Like I, I'd like to get some success, like is there some, one of those which is very, very close where we just need to maybe spend five minutes reading through it and we could close it off? Is there? Any candidate there? Michelle's is like one line. <laughs> it's one line. It just let, let, says 
Should we talk about that one? It's requirements yeah, for traffic good, target. I mean, she had small clarifications. Yeah, there was a thread. That's it was true. inspired by a Slack uh, conversation. Uh, I'm not sure if Patrice brought it up. I'm not sure who brought it up, but yeah. somebody brought it up and said that, you know, what, what is the behavior of a traffic target if no uh, spec resource is defined? And I just put in a line that says, and we didn't clarify that in the, uh, in the, um, right spec, but on Slack, we clarified that a valid traffic target needs to have at least one destination, one source, and one um, rule. Uh, one rule. Yeah, one rule. Yeah. Thank you. Um, We're talking about pull request 192. Um, is there anyone on this call who has any like objection merging that in? Like It, it sounds to me like a pretty straightforward thing to do. Huh? Is there any objection? So we cannot merge anything now. It's a conflict because I changed the spec. Sorry, yes, but so people have to like, Yes, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you know what I mean. Essentially saying like yes, we are once the other thing is fixed, we can actually um, you know, getting the getting the thing merged. All right. So it sounds like we've got approvals for yours, Michelle. Okay, uh, well, uh, Stefan mentioned that um, he wants me to fix the compatible with, but I think there's another pull request by Patrice that actually fixes the working yes. document. 191. Yeah, so if you want to push that, then I'll rebase on to that, Patrice. I think we're in a trust environment. If we record in the meeting saying like, yes, there's the group uh, considers that as, you know, thumbs up, uh, resolving these dependencies, I, I guess, you know, we are, we're all engineers who will somehow figure out the way. Yeah. Um, well, what to rebase with. Yeah, and it looks like Patrice's was discussed in the September 30th meeting, and then he put the pull request in. So if anyone has any objections to it, like looking at it on GitHub and recording those or approving it would be great, because we already did talk about that one in September 30th in the meeting. You're well, referring to 191, right? Uh, the align the structure of the four APIs. Yeah, that's yeah. one nine one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are essentially so there. We have two already approved. So that seems like also good, right? Uh, the uh, there's a conflict, so I'm going to fix that. Yeah, but, but that's exactly what I mean in in terms of like agreement in principle versus, you know, figuring out the mechanics to resolve, to untangle this thing because there are mechanical issues. But like if someone would say like, whoa, I have an, an, a problem with that. There's an objection. That's something else. I just want to sure. make sure that everyone is like, yep, fine. And then, you know, we trust that you folks will figure out how to untangle yeah, awesome. this. And then I added one from the metrics repo because I thought it was kind of interesting and maybe somebody isn't usually referring or reviewing over in that repo wants to look at it. That one being, um, if there is this issue in Kubernetes 119, then we might need to get that fix in. Someone opened an issue uh, and a, a pull request. A URL? So yeah, it's in the I'm notes. Uh, review needed cert use certs that have alternate SAN fields. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It would probably be as you know useful to note. Wait. Hey, Bridget, I missed the comment on this one. Oh, I was just saying because it's not in the spec repo, it's in the metrics repo, people might not have noticed it, but it might be important. Yeah. So I wanted to bring it to our attention. Good. And that's all. I, I feel like I've taken up a lot of time with this and, you know, uh, metrics. Speaking of metrics, Michelle had some stuff to tell us as well, but. Yeah. Let's yeah. maybe, if you, if you are fine with that, let's maybe move on yeah. to the next. I'm, uh, I'm totally fine. I just want to bring to everyone's attention that we wanted to work on some of these. Okay. Thank you. If we do have time at the end, we can revisit that. Cool. Uh, Michelle, as in my metrics. Oh, yeah. Um, I had to move the deep dive from, or thanks actually, Bridget moved the deep dive from last week to next week. Um, uh, just um, know that a metric specific discussion is happening next week. Um, the goal there is to discuss um, 
problems that have arisen from trying to implement SMI metrics. So I know that the Linkerd folks um, took a stab at it and uh, for using it like with their CLI commands. And like we also have taken a stab on it and we've implemented it with Envoy under the hood um, and Prometheus, but um, uh, we did run into some issues. And so uh, John, who's on my team, is going to walk us through what he did and any um, issues. I know Stefan has talked, uh, we, Stefan and I have talked about some issues with metrics as well. So just bring all your metric specific things to the meeting next week. Can we, for the people who were not, uh, when we initially set that up or talked about that, what's the goal of that next week's metrics meeting? What do we want to get out of it? I think that's a really good question. Um, I think where th the idea is to talk about uh, how you've implemented SMI metrics. So we'll bring our implementation, kind of give a five, 10 minute overview of like what went into doing that. Um, the action item or the end of meeting, I'm hoping to get kind of a, a list of things, a list of issues that people have run into that are common and some areas that we know we need to improve. Cool. Okay. Um, I just noticed that my colleague David actually tried us now. So if we do have a few minutes, maybe um, we could actually jump back to the very first agenda item. Uh, unless anyone has anything else uh, in the meantime. Um, I don't know, David, are you, are you uh, on the call? Can you hear us? Yeah, sorry, I joined a little bit late. I'm just listening. Uh, I'm, I'm from the AWS App Mesh team. Right, and, and if you look at the agenda item, the first one, um, this is, if I remember correctly, something that we discussed internally, right? The, um, conformance suite for the data plan. Uh, oh, the, uh, the conformance suite for, uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't really know what all you ended up talking about there. Um, my, my interest there was um, we're, um, we're doing something very similar for app mesh. And I think one of my concerns is, um, at least I'm, I'm in the opinion that we can generally get the API level consistent across all these different implementations, but making sure that, well, one, just our own implementations are uh, internally consistent, uh, but then two, um, having all these implementations fit some kind of general expectation for how SMI should be implemented. Um, and that, that's sort of my going concern around SMI is the hard part's really just the data plane conformance and consistency for customers. Right, and I guess that was the question, right? Because I, I was only able to, to convey so much, like what does it actually mean, right? Because for example, it kind of, if you say data plane uh, conformance, it kind of like assumes that there is a, a standard, right? Or to address the, the elephant in the room, like to assume that Envoy is the standard, right? Otherwise, well, if you have different- it, It's not even just Envoy, right? It, it's um, um, I, it's uh, like behavior around like things like, um, I'll, I'll use an example I know that is true in both Istio and AppMesh of like, if you have a TCP service on the same port as an HTTP service, is that routable? Um, how, what, what gets preferred there? Um, and, and one of the kind of the, the sad secrets of like all these service meshes, maybe not uh, OSM, I, I haven't used OSM much, so maybe OSM is perfect here. Uh, but at least for the rest of us, um, there's all of these interesting gotyas as we're trying to um, make the obvious use cases work. Uh, so, so for example, in that previous one for Istio and AppMesh, the TCP service would just get dropped. Couldn't route it, HP is preferred. Um, but we're all working to not only try and fix these bugs because customers do encounter them, um, uh, but also I'd say like as, as a general guiding light of where we're trying to get to is like, we want something that's kind of like a normal VPC. Like these things, like things should, you should be able to, in the sense of like, there shouldn't be any weird edge cases. There shouldn't actually, it shouldn't be obvious that there's actually this proxy in the middle that is making 
preferential decisions or that you're having to deal with its um, configuration. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And so I think in general, like Istio is, is improving this, App Mesh is improving this. Uh, I don't know where OSM is at, but I'm assuming that wherever OSM is, they're improving that. Um, I, I think my concern then with SMI would be, as we're all improving and fixing our gotyas, are we, one, do we, well, I think the big thing is, are we converging on a consistent state? Um, and what interesting edge cases would be different between the two implementations? Um, and then also like having that conformance suite would allow us to track um, uh, edge cases at like an SMI level. Like we're doing that for app mesh, but I don't actually know how app mesh from a data plane is differing from SMI as a spec for the data plane. Um, I, yeah, I guess so that, that helps already a little, but I guess to, to really capture everything, it would be as, as we had in the notes already, it would really be great, David, if you could create an issue. Um, and essentially, maybe you have even, like you gave one example, which is already helpful, but maybe you have more. Um, so that we then can also, because essentially, you know, in these agendas, we essentially re refer to certain issues so that we can, you know, track where are we, what, what is needed to resolve, et cetera. So if, if you could do that, that would definitely be very helpful. Yeah, I'll, I'll put up an issue and I'll, I can take the doc I've written for app mesh and because I, I don't think it's particularly app mesh specific besides the word app mesh like a million times in it. Um, and I can convert that into something for like uh, the SMIO uh, space. Um, yep. Cool. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot. Cool. Uh, any questions for David or? Uh... Thanks. Like, uh, I we've definitely been running into uh, edge cases and kind of don't. Uh, know where to go all the time and uh, sometimes we take those questions back to the SMI community and have like issues and threads about it so it's great to like kind of get exposed some uh, some more of these um, uh, issues and see if there's more we can do along the lines of conformance so thanks awesome. so yeah. this this is a, a opens an exciting question is at mesh going to be the next logo on the SMI spec webpage Stay tuned, but I'm interested to find Stay out. Tuned. Exactly, yeah. I, I, I can say that there's reInvent relatively soon. You know, reInvent is our our version of uh, Google Cloud Next, I think that's the official name. Um, yeah, so stay tuned, yeah. Definitely. Um, any other questions? Anything that we can actually <laughs> address? <laughs> Okay. Um, I have a question for uh, sorry. Michelle. Yeah. Um, sure. Go ahead. If there is a plan to get uh, the latest spec in OSM, I'm referring to traffic split, of course. That was for Michelle, right? Yeah, we're all looking at you, Michelle. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, something just like popped up on my screen. What did you say, Stefan? I'm so sorry. <laughs> well it was my manager. <laughs> just that's what happened. Is the latest traffic split going to be in OSM real soon? Now, give us status updates, latest, please. Oh yeah, we are we are we are running into some issues <laughs> programming the proxy uh, to handle that situation. Um, uh, because we use like, um, it's like, uh, we, we use traffic target fundamentally as a way to actually like program the routes in the proxy. So then when you do traffic split, you also like have to handle like, especially the latest version with all the HTTP spec support. Um, then you have to like, we're trying to figure out how to do that. <laughs> um, but it's being worked on, it's on our public roadmap and, uh, I don't think it's going to be in the next few weeks, but definitely within the next month or two. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the update. Can I just make the link here with the, um, the question from David, the fact that different service meshes, despite the fact that they would even use the same SMI, will not configure the Envoy the same way. Is, is it the, related to what you were uh, talking about, David? Uh, sorry, uh, say that one more time. 
So um, it looks like we are in a situation where we have different service mesh and even if they, they would uh, finally converge to use SMI as an, an API to, um, to receive their configuration, they will end up in configuring the data plane and Voy in particular in a different way. Is it, the, the, is it related to what you were saying to have some more confirmance on the data plane level? Yeah, it, yeah. Like it, it's not necessarily that like we have to configure Envoy exactly the same way or even be using Envoy. It's uh, but, but it would help. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah, it, it, it's yeah, it is the actual behavior that customers see in the data plane um, consistent across all the different implementations. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also even and maybe that doesn't have to be perfectly consistent, but being able to. Um, test a implementation and show how they're, they're non-conforming or I don't know if there's some kind of like shoulds or preferred um, behavior or implementation defined where it, it's very clear how different data planes diverge and mm -hmm. that they don't diverge on maybe some core fundamentals of how a SMI data plane should work. Uh, yeah, I, I like the expression. SMI okay. data plane. The, the, the thing is, like, I, I'm, you know, David is definitely way, way, way more deep, deep into that and, and the expert than, than, than I am. Uh, but I'm, I'm really curious to learn, and maybe that issue helps to, to tease that out, what is indeed a data plane property or, or issue? Because the, the, the example that you gave, to a certain extent, to me, that sounds more like the semantics of the spec might not be 100% sharp or clear, right? If it's if it's kind of like unclear which which of those two should be, obviously it, it, it impacts the configuration of Envoy or whatever proxy, uh, whatever you might have there. Um, but to me, that still sounds a bit like um, kind of like an, an uncertainty or, or un, you know, it's not entirely um, clear in, in, the, in, the, in the control plane spec. But, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think that issue. Is, uh, this is due to historical reasons, like traffic split was uh, first implemented in Linkerd, and Linkerd does its own discovery of Kubernetes services and defaults to Kubernetes services, which is wonderful, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work in an Envoy world where you need something to base, uh, to base mm -hmm. your uh, routes. Mm -hmm. So, OSM, uh, um, OSM choose a uh, traffic target, which I, which I think it's a mistake because maybe you don't want any kind of firewall rules. Uh, you just want right. to split traffic. So it, for me, traffic target is like a network policy. There are many Kubernetes clusters out there that have CNIs that don't even right. implement network policy. EKS is a good example of that. Yeah. And, and I guess what, what I'm suggesting is that maybe the question that David raises is not just, just you know, the, the, the original core question that he had, but it's maybe a, a wider discussion um, and we might end up doing a, you know, a dedicated, like in the same way that we do next week metrics, that we dive deeper into that issue around, if, if, if people think yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, around that. And then if, if David can share uh, any, any notes there uh, to, to you know, put some more flesh on that, that, that would, would also help. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I think um, you know, one, one of the hard parts about sort of being spec first, which is kind of what SMI is. Now, now there is OSM, which is a sole implementer of it, is that it's really hard to know all the edge cases ahead of time. Um, and, and that's why I, I'm, I'm more of the opinion like a like conformance suites and tests that we know run against particular sets of implementations and using that to work backwards into a spec or a more comprehensive spec seems to make more sense to me. Um, and especially for something like the data plane where we have several potential implementations. Um, uh, yeah, I, it's hard. <laughs> it's yeah, hard I'm thing. with you on the implementation first kind of approach. I think that's what Linkerd originally and console and solo and 
There's one more person. I don't know who the partner was. This is before my time. I asked my kind of got together and shared their learnings and created this spec. And then we kind of came along later and started implementing. Um, so we definitely have run into a bunch of edge cases. Yeah. And, it, and, I was, I was saying, it's like we're all browsers, like, you know, browsers <laughs> implemented things in a million different ways. And now we're trying to like homogenize things. Uh, <laughs> and so we're, so we're just, we're just having to look at the implementations and come up with some spec that makes sense across all of that. Yeah. I, I was, I mean, I would be like, I think it's super important to like get aligned as a community on the conformance testing doc. And I know like Lee Calcutta has kind of been pinging people and asking people very loudly to review the doc and then a little bit of it, but yeah. I feel like we need more reviews on it. And I'll, at this point, I feel like it's worth maybe doing an hour long review of the doc together so we can expose some of the issues in real time between the implementations. I don't know if that'll help. Mm -hmm. I, I hate I hate to to interrupt, but uh, as as the moderator of this meet, meeting, I I have to insist uh, it, we are at the top of half hour, um, so unfortunately <laughs> I have to wrap it up now. Um, but let's keep it coming. And uh, yeah, David, looking forward to your issue, and then we can take that and put it on the agenda again and continue the discussion. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks a lot, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye. See you around. Bye. See you next week. Metrics. Bye now. <laughs>